And if you go to the CSA course under classwork, there's a link to your unit four lab, which is the debugging lab. Here's the debugging lab right here. If you click on this link, it'll take you to where all the labs are stored. And the lab we want is called debugging projects, which is right here. And you want to download this entire folder. There's a lot of files in here. So you want to right mouse click and say download the debugging projects folder. And this used to happen really fast, but Google servers have slowed down a lot over the last couple of years. So you may have to wait a few minutes for the file to download. Once you have the folder downloaded, you can open it over here on the bottom left by saying show in folder. And there it is right there. You notice that there's a little zipper on the file. When there's a zipper on the file, that means you can't really use it. You have to double click on it to unzip it. And there is the unzipped folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that unzipped folder and I'm going to drag it into my BlueJ folder project, whatever. I don't seem to have a BlueJ folder here for some reason. I'll just drag it to my desktop, but you should drag this folder into your BlueJ folder. Once you have it there, uh, you can go to it and look at it. And you can see that this particular lab folder has 15 projects in it. They're really tiny, except for the last one, which is a little bit more complicated. And if you look in here, there should be one little package file that looks like this. OK, uh, so we're going to open up this package file, and that should start up the BlueJ. And you should get these 15 different folders, uh, each with a separate problem. And some of them compile, some of them don't compile, et cetera. I'm going to do a couple of these with you, and then I'm going to give you about 15, 20 minutes to work on this. I don't expect you to finish this today, obviously, since this is your lab for the unit. My experience with this lab with other classes, it'll take you probably about 45 minutes to do everything except for the last problem or two, and then it'll take you another 45 minutes just to do those. So it's about an hour and a half lab altogether. I'm going to give you some time today to work on it, and then you have to finish it on your own time. Let's look at the first problem. And this one is supposed to print hello world. And if you hit the compile button, you'll see you're getting some bizarre errors. And I'd like to know if someone can help me fix this one. Uh, that's a good point. You need an end curly bracket. Okay, let's put that in. Here? This one? That actually can go on either line. In case I forgot to mention it, Java ignores the blank line. So even if I wrote it like this, it would still be okay. Uh, was there anything else, Ms. Mithika? Okay, that was the main thing. So I have to swap these two like that. And now once you fix these issues, you can run this program. And you can see that it works fine. Let's look at another one. This one has got a similar issue. Can someone tell me what's wrong here? Mr. Sneed, what do you see, sir? There's a semicolon missing here. Does anybody see anything else? Mr. Mason. Main should not be capitalized, right? By the way, if you did have main capitalized, let me show you what's going to happen here. You see it'll still compile. And then when you go to run it, you'll see you'll get this weird problem. So we have to fix that by making main small. And now it'll be able to run fine. And that's that one. Now I'll do one more with you. Let me see one good one to do here. OK, this one is supposed to run 10 times, but it's not running correctly. Now, you could probably look at this right away and see what's wrong. But I'm going to show you a way to debug this problem. In fact, the main idea behind this lab is not so much to fix these right away as to learn how to debug a program using breakpoints. So let's use the breakpoint technique on problem number three. And let's insert breakpoints at 12 and 13. 
hit the compile button, and then hit a breakpoint here and a breakpoint there. So I've got two breakpoints in here now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this window and run this program. And you can see I'm sitting right here, and I've got my window that shows the code, and I've got my window that shows the debugging. And right now I'm right here. And if I was to step, you can see that it's going to go over here, and the mm. variable i has now finally come into creation. And you can step through here and try and figure out what's wrong. I think the last time I showed you how to debug, I forgot to mention the difference between step and step into. Is that correct? Did I cover that material or no? No. So step moves one line ahead in the program. Step into, if the one line that you're on right now is a method call, step will run that method and come back and go to the next line. But step into will let you go to that method and further step through that method if you want to. So that's not uh, that's not relevant here because there are no method calls inside here, but this will let you step into an inv individual method call. This will run the method and just have it be like a single line of code, come back and continue. So this will now, if, w if I hit continue now, it'll go to the next breakpoint, which happens to be on the next line in this case. And you can see here, oh, uh, yeah, it's continuing here. And uh, I can keep hitting continue, and you can see it'll keep going. And you can try and figure out what's wrong using this breakpoint technique. Now, this one is probably so simple that you don't need to use the breakpoint technique, but there's some other ones that get mm -hmm. harder as you go here, like this one, for example, where it might be helpful to figure out what's going on. Let's look at the last couple of problems, which are much more challenging. Let's look at number 14. Uh, OK, this is the one I wanted you to see. This one is a little bit harder than the others. And here you're trying to use this algorithm to figure out if which numbers are prime and which numbers are not prime. And here. You want to be especially careful about putting breakpoints in here and running through here and try to figure out what's wrong with this code and how to fix it. Here, you're going to be tempted to throw this all out and just write your own method, but you're not allowed to do that. You have to fix the existing code. 